Hello and welcome to Heavy Metal Rex. My name is Wace and today I'm really excited to bring you this particular car. Uh, some of you guys know I'm actually in California this weekend for Subi Fest and I'm also hanging out with Aeroflow Dynamics who was nice enough to let me take their Civic Type R out. Now, I'm not gonna go too deep into this because so many other better reviews have been already put out there for the Civic Type R. For me, it's something that I wanted to get to compare to the WRX that I have. Now, I still maintain that the Civic Type R and the WRX, is, they are not in the same class. Uh, the Civic Type R MSRP is about 46,000, which is almost 14,000 more than a base WRX. Now, that's not something that I feel is comparable. Now, you can try to compare this to a Civic a, uh, the WRX TR or TS that's coming out, but still, I think that the this particular car outclasses the WRX in a lot of different ways. Uh, first of all, obviously the engine is a lot more potent from stock. It's still a two liter turbo making 315 horsepower and 310 pound foot of torque, which is a lot more than the 271 that we get in the WRX. Now I know uh, Sam Car Legion has done a couple of race videos with this car versus the WRX and this car is ahead. It is a truly a remarkable vehicle and it is definitely built for the track. Now, I've always maintained that Civic uh, Hondas have been very well built. I used, to, I used to sell Hondas back, way back in the day, and uh, I used to sell uh, the Type R, the 05 Type R and the uh, 07, or I think it was the 09 and uh, maybe later S2000s. And they were very fun cars to drive. Now, what I'm gonna look at in this is just how the car feels on a daily basis. I don't know exactly how much of this car is actually modded, so we're not gonna worry too much about the power that it makes, but more so how it feels to use set power. Now, some of the things that the WRX has always had issues with is a shifter. Honda is actually known for their higher quality shifters. Now, I did drive this car over here, and what's crazy about it is the clutch is incredibly light, which is not, at least in my opinion, super characteristic of different Hondas, but it did remind me of the 22 WRX when I first drove it, having that very light clutch. A uh, couple of things on the inside of the car that are really interesting for a car that's $46,000, I feel like it's missing a couple of bits. So come on inside and I'll show you. Now sitting inside this car, it is incredibly comfortable. I will say these racing seats are way better bolstering than uh, I'd say even the Recaros that we get in the GT and the TS and the TR. Now it's still, again, not it's not really fair, I think, to compare this to either of those cars because this is considerably more expensive and purpose built. Uh, what I love about some of the interior is it is, it's minimalistic for a driving experience, but at the same time, you expect to have a little bit more. I'll give you an example. For $46,000, I expect wireless Android Auto, and we still don't, you actually don't get this in the TR. Uh, a couple of other features that the TR does have, it does have a digital display, which is kind of cool. That's something that I have said about the, the WRX TS that's coming out. It's a nice added feature that I think kind of modernizes the car. Uh, this car, I believe, is lowered. Uh, <laughs> I can tell because when I'm stepping out of it, especially after my WRX, it's quite low to the ground. Uh, I do want to talk about the infotainment system a little bit, but there are a couple of features, and we're going to go on a drive, and I'll talk more about that in uh, greater detail, that I, th I found was really interesting. The, the, there are different drive modes. Um, I assume that there's like an eco mode, there's a normal mode, there's a, the, R, the plus R or R plus. I'm not sure which of the two it is. Is it? It says plus R on the button, so I'm going to assume it's a plus R. Now remember, this is a, <laughs> this, I'm, I don't own Hondas, so this is coming from a WRX owner, so if I say something weird that is not the normal, please forgive me in that. But what's really interesting is, um, I don't know if it happens in all the modes, but in the plus R mode, it does have auto rev matching, which I've always found it is another thing that's kind of polarizing in the car community because people will say to you, well, if you have a manual, you should, you should uh, rev match it yourself. But in this case, it does a admirable job rev matching. Uh, the car is, it seems a little bit smaller to me. I, um, which is funny because I, my rental is actually a Corolla and this feels very similar size wise to a Corolla. Now um, there's plenty of headroom, but I feel like the width is a little bit, it's a little bit narrower. Maybe it's the seats because I do have such broad shoulders and wide hips. Um, overall, the car just seems smaller. I actually sat in the rear seat. It does have a good amount of uh, space in the back, but because it is a hatch, the rear does slope a little bit and it does take away some of the headroom. Uh, I'm thinking about this more on a daily basis because if I buy a car, I'm gonna use it for everything, not just racing on the track. And I think most people who would purchase this car would also 
would do the same. Now, the, the shifter is something I wanna talk about because that, in a manual car, the engagement of the shifter is really what you feel on a daily basis, the clutch and the shifter. And the clutch is very light and it feels great. And this car is still fairly new, only 2,200 miles on it. So it's, you know, it hasn't really been beaten in quite like their uh, WRX has. But the clutch, like many Honda clutches, is so smooth. And even more so, going into first on a low speed, there's no, uh, there's no, uh, like, you don't have to force it like we do on the WRX, which is very, you know, like, it's, it's different. It's, we're not used to that. We're not accustomed to that having WRXs because our shifter kind of sucks. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna plug up the camera inside and we're gonna go for a drive and there's, there are, there are some things I wanna talk about. Uh, I don't know this area too well, so I'm gonna find a couple of spots where we can kind of open it up because the way this car does deliver power is also something it's, it's worth talking about. This is like so nitpicky, but this is like the cheapest rear view mirror I have seen in a car in so long, especially a car that costs this much. When I grabbed it and I changed this, I actually feel like I'm gonna rip it off. Like I, I am not even kidding. It feels like incredibly cheap plastic. Now here's something that I wasn't expecting. This actually does not have a handbrake. It has an electronic brake. So for, I, you know, that's, that is a really big deal breaker for some people buying a manual car when you don't have a physical handbrake. Me, I, I'm not sure. I mean, actually, I kind of am because when I, go, when I go rallying, when I go on the dirt, I kind of like having that handbrake there if I want to pull it to rotate the car a little bit. But the fact that this doesn't have one, you know, that kind of sucks. Okay, right away, I have to tell you, this car is a real joy to drive. It is so easy to drive, especially considering that this is a manual and sometimes some manuals can be a little rough. I think back to my 2021 WRX and the OEM clutch on it was no, not the best. This is really nice. It's, um, it's, I'm, I'm like trying to drive through traffic, trying to figure out like where to go. I want to like get to the highway, but I don't, I don't know this area that well. Um, it's so smooth. It kind of reminds me of when I got the WRX for the first time. Uh, the, I actually have it right now in sport mode. And um, I don't know if, I'll, I gotta check to see if it rev matches in sport mode. I'm not sure if it does. The steering wheel is, it has a good weight to it. Like it's not, um, I don't actually, <laughs> forgive me, I don't know if this is electronic assisted. Uh, it probably is electronic assisted, uh, but it feels a lot like an STI. And I know the STIs, they were hydraulic. Uh, it feels great. I love the weight to it even in sport mode. That's the one thing I'd, I always had a complaint, and many people had the same complaint about the WRX, where it was a very soft, very twitchy steering wheel. And they did correct some of that with the TR and the TS, but I don't think enough. And it's obviously, it's directly related to the electronic, you know, the dual electronic pinion. It's, it's, such, a, it's such a soft steering wheel that you'll be going down the highway and it'll kind of like jiggle a little bit, but you'll still be going in a straight line, which I, I don't like that. I, I've never actually really liked that. Uh, the seats feel, Amazing. This is, uh, if I get a racing seat, I would get something similar to this. Uh, they, these are actual bucket seats and it feels great. Shifter, phenomenal. And here, I'm actually gonna check to see if it rev matches. Yeah, it does actually rev match even in sport mode. And it's, it is seamless. It is better than I could ever do. You know, like, well, obviously even with enough practice, I don't think that some of us can, can be as good as the computer. Now, the infotainment system, is really cheap you know yeah it's like the little tablet style but like it is i'd say our infotainment system looks better visually but this one is a lot quicker it looks like it's running at like 60 or 90 fps with like 60 or 90 hertz like it's proper nice but the wx1 is like it runs at like 20 fps or something like that i don't know i've never been a fan of that part of it uh very responsive it's great there's a lot of settings that I was looking for. Like I couldn't find where to turn off the rev matching and I don't know if it's even possible to do. Most cars I think do have a button to turn that off. But I mean, in this case, you, you just don't really worry about it. Uh, so I'm having to record this after the fact because as you can see, once again, my mic died in the middle of this drive and I had some really interesting things to say about this car. Um, 
After this, I actually ended up talking about the shifter, which was, again, for a Honda shifter, it is phenomenal. I'm actually a really big fan of all Honda shifters. I've said this pretty much in every video whenever we end up talking about uh, shift knobs and just like the shifter assemblies. The clutch feels great. The, shift, the shifting was so smooth and so precise in what I expect, especially from a performance-oriented Honda. Uh, the, what's crazy about this is it is a turbocharged 2-liter, but the way that they've tuned this is a lot like the VBWRX where the power doesn't just come on and hit you all of a sudden. It is such a smooth power delivery, which I, I appreciate as a daily. I know a lot of people, this is kind of subjective, a lot of people do like having that sudden surge of, of power kick in all of a sudden, but it makes the rest of the driving experience feel a little limp, especially when you're not in boost, uh, which is, you know, again, if that's what you like, then that's what you like, but completely stock, this felt great. Now, I'm sure once this gets tuned, that feeling would change, you know, power, obviously when the turbo kicks in, there would be a lot more power up top, uh, which is fine. The seats again felt phenomenal. The steering wheel, I cannot stress this enough, a proper racing steering wheel or a racing tuned steering wheel in a car like this is something that I wish we had in the, in the WRX. And the fact that the WRX steering does, it's, you know, we, like I was saying earlier, it, it twitches a lot. And I know they try to fix that in the TR, but they didn't go far enough. I, I really think they need to sit down and have a complete rework of that, unless unless that's something that's going to be coming with the STI. The car, I do believe the car was on coilover, so it was considerably bumpier. Uh, but man, when I was driving through some of these roads, because I was, I was in California at the time, uh, some of these roads were really windy and, and a, a kind of small, and it felt, especially with the steering, it felt great throwing the car left and right. I actually tr tried to make my way up to a canyon road uh, unfortunately, it was closed because whatever wildfires that were going on some time ago, and I drove up there not knowing it was closed. I spent an hour, uh, and this whole video was really difficult to make because I didn't plan on making this, so I wasn't prepared. And me not knowing the area, I didn't know where to go, where to where to take the car. Actually, the area that I went earlier in the parking lot, they ended up kicking me out for no reason. It's just like a, a uh, like a country, like not a country club, but it was just like a, a club of some kind. Uh, and so this was this was hard to make. And uh, of course, as you can see, the, the mic broke as well. But again, coming back to this car, for 44, it's like forty-four or $46,000, you get a lot of car. But at the same time, you can see where the money went. You know, we went into the performance aspect. It went into the seats. It went into the, the steering, the suspension, the engine. Truth be told, a lot of people probably are not going to take this car to the track. Uh, and this is something that I experience even with SDI owners and other performance uh, people who buy performance cars, they just race on the street or whatever. But that said, there's a lot of things about this that it was missing out in for like daily life. Like the, the rear view mirror I showed you was pretty shit. Um, not having wireless Android Auto, having only one USB, USB. Actually, you know what? I don't even think it had any USB-C plugs at all, which again, this is a new car. We're talking like 2023 and now 2024. And what's crazy is I, I completely forgot to showcase this, but the rear seat, the rear seat, the bench is actually cut in half. And in the middle, it's a plastic and a cup holder. So if somebody sits in the middle, people have to reach between their legs to get to the, to the cup holders. It's such a weird design. I don't know why they went with that instead of having just like a 60-40 split with the, uh, the, center, the center armrest that comes out with the cup holders. They just put the cup holders right in the seat. I find that very unusual. Um, besides all of those things, you know, Again, it's not a WRX competitor. And I also don't think that it is a WRX TR competitor. The TR is still tough because, you know, you don't really get a whole lot of extra power. But until the car and driver lightning lap comes out for the TS, which I hope it does soon, you know, or I guess it will come out next year. Um, I'm curious to see how much those tires and brakes have uh, made that better. Because I know one of the complaints that they had was, you know, besides the short gearing, the brakes on the tires just did not inspire enough confidence to brake deeper into, into a turn, which around a track, the TR definitely might compete. But at the, when it comes to just like straight line speed, many videos have already posted and shown that the WRX is definitely behind in, with, from cars like the uh, Civic Type R and even the GR Corolla, which of course these cars are technically over 300 to the crank and maybe a little bit higher than the WRX to the wheel. Um, all that said, you know, would you buy this over a base WRX? I guess it really depends on if you have the money. I'm not sure exactly how proficient the aftermarket for the Type R is. I'm sure you can get it at, to a pretty high number considering it already starts on the higher side. But 
that's $46,000 plus extra money, you know, and I'm not sure how the tuning works with this. I don't know if you have to send the ECU out or if you can just tune it the way we can with Subarus, but that's the nice thing about a WRX is you can buy a base one and now even, even better, a lot of 22s you can buy under like 10,000 miles or less for like in the mid 20s, which is actually a really good deal, especially if you can get a limited and then just build whatever you want on top of that. Because for, I'd say, realistically, under, what's that, like 700 for the access port, 300 for an intake, and maybe like, you know, 200 to 600 for a tune, under $2,000, you can easily make more power than a Type R with really no drawbacks whatsoever. And this is just a 93 tune, you know? So that's something to, to consider. And if power is your main motivator for buying a car, then get a WRX. Well, obviously tune, you know, unless you're not going to tune it, then you have to dish out the extra, you know, uh, $12,000 to get a Type R. But I don't know if $12,000 is enough to command for the, the, the pieces that you get this. And sometimes I even feel the same way about the WXTR. Yeah, the WXTR is amazing and the TS is going to be awesome. But now we're over $40,000, you know. But the nice thing about the WRX, unlike the Civic Type R, is you can get them under MSRP, whereas the Type R does command a premium. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I apologize for the audio issues again, but I uh, hope it was somewhat informative. I did, all, all this aside, I really enjoyed driving this car. It was an absolute treat, but every time I drove it, I reminded myself how much it is. So uh, anyway, I will see you guys in the next one.